Blue Origin's latest New Shepard flight may have reached the skies, but on the ground, the picture looks very different. Every launch, no matter how routine or symbolic, is measured against the brutal pace of progress set by competitors. And while Blue Origin celebrates a suborbital milestone, the wider industry has already moved far beyond these quick trips to the edge of space. What's becoming harder to ignore is the widening gap. SpaceX has established itself as the undisputed workhorse of orbital access, pushing forward with Starship, cargo deliveries, crew transport, and satellite deployment at a scale Blue Origin hasn't come close to matching. In contrast, Blue Origin's flagship rocket for competing in that arena, New Glenn, remains grounded, years behind schedule, and without the record of reliability customers now expect. And this is where the story sharpens. Blue Origin isn't just running late. They're running the risk of being left out. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss how this competition is unfolding and what it means for the future of space. The launch of New Shepard 35 marked a significant milestone for Blue Origin's suborbital program. As the 35th flight in the New Shepard series, New Shepard 35 carried particular weight because it followed the program's previous setback, a flight anomaly that had grounded the system for months. This mission was a crucial return to flight demonstration. Every phase, from liftoff to landing, unfolded without incident, underscoring Blue Origin's deliberate emphasis on reliability and safety. The success of New Shepard 35 reaffirmed the system's readiness for continued operations and restored confidence in the program's stability. Unlike Blue Origin's high-profile crewed flights, New Shepard 35 was focused entirely on research. The capsule carried a suite of scientific payloads designed to take advantage of the microgravity environment offered during suborbital flight. Among the payloads were experiments supported by NASA's TechRise Student Challenge, a program that enables students to test concepts in real-world space conditions. Other experiments included material science investigations and biological studies aimed at understanding how different systems behave in reduced gravity. The mission highlighted New Shepard's role as a vehicle for space tourism and as a functional laboratory in the sky. The flight itself unfolded with the precision that has become a hallmark of successful New Shepard missions. Shortly after liftoff, the booster carried the capsule upward before executing stage separation. The booster then initiated its controlled descent, performing a smooth vertical landing back at the designated pad, a complex engineering achievement that demonstrates the maturity of Blue Origin's reusable rocket technology. Meanwhile, the capsule reached its apogee, where onboard experiments experienced several minutes of weightlessness before beginning their descent. Its landing was completed safely under parachutes in the West Texas desert, ensuring the return of all scientific payloads intact. Beyond the technical demonstration, New Shepard 35 carried commercial and educational significance. For researchers, the mission offered a cost-effective way to access microgravity, a resource traditionally limited to orbital flights aboard vehicles like the ISS. By providing this suborbital platform, Blue Origin enables scientists to conduct iterative testing and gather data more frequently. The company also continued its Club for the Future initiative, sending postcards drawn by students to space and back, a symbolic gesture linking educational outreach with real spaceflight. These efforts reinforce New Shepard's role as both a scientific tool and a vehicle for inspiring the next generation. Looking at the program's trajectory, the success of New Shepard 35 clears the path for more frequent flights. Blue Origin has positioned New Shepard as a dual-purpose system capable of serving both paying passengers and research customers. With the anomaly behind them and a successful return to flight completed, the company is expected to accelerate the cadence of missions to meet growing demand. Future flights will likely include a mix of crewed tourism missions and uncrewed research payloads, giving the program balance and flexibility. Ultimately, the flawless execution of New Shepard 35 reinforced the resilience of the New Shepard program.
Each mission contributes to a growing body of operational experience, strengthening Blue Origin's ability to deliver reliable suborbital access. While the company's larger ambitions, like the new Glenn Orbital rocket, remain on the horizon, New Shepard continues to provide a working foundation. New Shepard 35 wasn't just a return to routine. It was a signal that the vehicle remains a dependable platform for science, education, and commercial growth in the suborbital spaceflight sector. But here's where the reality sharpens. Suborbital spaceflight and orbital spaceflight are not in the same league. The difference is not just in altitude, it's in physics. A suborbital flight like New Shepard's is a vertical leap, a short arc that touches the boundary of space before falling back down. It's like tossing a ball into the air. In contrast, reaching orbit requires running sideways around the Earth so fast that you never fall back. Falcon 9, for example, doesn't just go up, it goes fast, hitting speeds over 28,000 kilometers per hour to stay aloft. That's the distinction between a quick hop to the edge of space and the sustained, continuous flight that defines true orbital capability. The engineering gap this represents is massive. Suborbital flights need enough thrust to reach around 100 kilometers in altitude, which demands relatively modest velocity. Orbital missions require over 40 times more kinetic energy. That's why orbital rockets are so much larger, more complex, and more expensive to design, build, and operate. To put it in perspective, the technical achievement of returning New Shepard safely to the pad is notable, but the challenge of routinely delivering satellites, cargo, or crew into orbit is an entirely different class of problem. This disparity is at the core of why Blue Origin's progress with New Shepard, while valuable, doesn't yet translate into competitiveness in the broader space industry. Numbers make this even clearer. Blue Origin has flown New Shepard 35 times over more than a decade. In contrast, SpaceX's Falcon 9 now averages more than 90 launches per year. That's nearly three times Blue Origin's total flight history in just 12 months. This cadence is not just about records, it's about operational maturity. Each Falcon 9 launch generates revenue from satellites, space station resupply, or crew transport. Each launch provides fresh data that feeds into incremental refinements, building reliability through repetition. Blue Origin, by comparison, is still in the realm of experimental cadence, where each mission is an event rather than routine. The implications are significant. Launch cadence is the lifeblood of a commercial rocket program. It proves a system is not just safe once, but reliable again and again. It generates the cash flow that sustains innovation and funds future projects, and it builds customer trust, since clients know their payloads will fly on schedule. With New Shepard flying only a handful of times per year at best, the program simply doesn't provide that operational track record. Instead, it functions more as a test bed and a niche service for suborbital science and tourism, while competitors dominate the high-value orbital market. Looking toward the next generation of rockets, the contrast continues. Blue Origin's answer to the orbital market is New Glenn a massive heavy-lift rocket designed to rival Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. But New Glenn has been delayed repeatedly, slipping years behind its original schedule. Hardware has been shown, engines tested, but the rocket itself remains grounded. Until it flies, it's a promise, not a product. This delay leaves Blue Origin without a presence in the orbital launch sector, even as demand for satellites, lunar missions, and deep space cargo is growing. Meanwhile, SpaceX has Starship. Although still in testing and not yet operational, its rapid development cycle is strikingly different from Blue Origin's measured approach. SpaceX tests, flies, fails, and repeats, pushing hardware at a breakneck pace with the goal of achieving full reusability. Starship is not designed to compete with today's market. It's designed to reset the market entirely by driving launch costs down so far that other providers will struggle to match. That vision operates at a scale beyond what New Glenn currently promises. Where Blue Origin works carefully toward its first orbital flight, SpaceX is already aiming to make orbital rockets as reusable as commercial airplanes. This comparison sets the competitive landscape in sharp relief. 
Blue Origin's New Shepard 35 proved the company can return to safe, reliable suborbital operations. But suborbital success doesn't automatically scale to orbital dominance, and the numbers, cadence, and next-generation projects highlight a fundamental gap. For Blue Origin to close it, New Glenn will need not just to fly, but to fly frequently, reliably, and commercially. Until then, New Shepard's achievements remain an important step, but only a step, in a race that's already being run on an entirely different track. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.